This came in from YouTube. Can you please do programs with Dr. Tony on Asperger NT marriages? Now, he or she did not leave a name, nor did they leave any specific questions. But I, what I thought we'd do is, do you know books? Is there some place people can go to get information oh, on marriage yeah. like that? It, it's very much a new area, and it's an area that I've been exploring for several decades. And there are resources. In fact, some of the best ones are published by Jessica Kingsley Publishers, www.jkp.com. Variety of uh, authors. Most of them are female, mm -hmm. um, and it tends to be slanted towards the neurotypicals' response to and coping strategies for the relationship. Mm -hmm. There's much less information on helping the person with Asperger's, who can be in two dimensions. One, not aware that they may not be fulfilling the needs of their partner, mm -hmm. blissfully unaware. Um, or they may feel a terrible disappointment because they're not meeting their partner's social needs, mm -hmm. affection needs, all those sorts of things. And they feel, if they're not careful, a sense of depression, mm -hmm. that I'm a failure, I can't meet your needs, mm -hmm. but I don't know what to do, and I feel I'm a disappointment to you. Mm -hmm. But there also needs to be help for the neurotypical partner in that situation. But what I tend to find is if both are sort of aspies, well, you know, then they often don't need relationship counselling because they're on the same planet, you know. <laughs> Their view is uh, in relation to, I have my little social needs, we both have the same social needs, that's fine. Emotional needs, intellectual needs. So there's a mutual understanding, so there's less likely to be a mismatch of needs in the relationship. Okay. Now, really, this would be a whole day talk about relationships because they're so complicated. But it's something that I think is going to become an increasing issue as parents of a kid with Asperger's identify a ghosting in themselves. Right. Or those with Asperger's are going to progress beyond a friendship and will have relationships in the future and are going to need guidance in that area. Mm -hmm. What I'd like to suggest is at some stage, could people write in their own questions on relationships? And we'll do a whole session on that. Excellent. Because I think it's very important for the happiness of both partners. Mm -hmm. This is a follow-up to that. Mm. This is from <coughs> NT Girlfriend, and we've heard from her before. She is in a relationship. The relationship is a little bit more serious now. She has a question about statistics. I've learned that there is a 90% chance that a baby will get AS if one of the parents has AS. Is this true? And if my child turns out to have AS as well, I'm not sure I would be able to cope with dealing with two Aspies at the same time. Do you have any thoughts on this? Statistics. Well, first of all, the statistics are wrong. W-R-O-N-G. Wrong. <laughs> okay? Um, now, yes, there is a genetic element, and we will be looking at the genogram for both sides. And for some, half the cases we see, the cause of ASD is not genetics. It's something that occurred in utero. It's something that affected the brain's development. And so both parties may scan their own and their partner's genetic history and go, nah, not in mine. And their partner says, no, not in yours and not in etc. So in half the cases we see, it's not inherited. Mm. It may be genetic material, but as a one-off, like Down syndrome isn't inherited. Mm. Now, the other component is the research is starting to look at the recurrence rate. And so if you have one child with Asperger's, if you have a subsequent child who's a boy, that boy has a one in four chance, 25% chance of ASD. Mm -hmm. From my own clinical experience, when the genetics are related, and this is genetics because you can spot it in the family, with the mother with Asperger's, sometimes I think she may have a 50-50 chance with each conception which may be a greater level than the father. Not confirmed with research, but it's my own clinical opinion. Mm. So when we look at this, it's not 90%. Uh, it's much less than that. Now the question is, that she asks that subsequent to that is, how will I cope? Mm. Ooh, how will you cope when you have kids, whatever the child may be? It's very hard to determine that. What she may feel is that she's a minority and she's outvoted by two aspects. <laughs> and what you don't know is that those two Aspies will understand each other. <laughs> if you take Leanne Holiday Willie and her father, they understood each other really well, and they got on famously, fantastically. But like magnets, they're either attracting or opposing. So you don't know how 
you're going to cope, but you don't know how your partner's going to cope too. And that is another whole range of topics, is the person with Asperger's having confidence and ability in their paternal or parenting role. Mm -hmm. Now, what's going to happen is if you do uh, conceive and you do carry that child all the way through, um, when will I know that that person is ASD or not? We wouldn't know for sure that they're not until they're over three years old. So that means throughout the pregnancy and for the first three years of life, you're going to be so sensitive to, he looked away, he looked away, is he autistic? You know, he, he, he flinched at that sound, that must be autism. So if you've got to be careful, you're going to project on, on the person, all sorts of things. All the things in ASD occur in the ordinary population. What makes them significant is their dominance, not their existence. So how are you going to cope? Mm, I don't know depends on the child. But I can say categorically, it is not a 90% chance. When a parent has Asperger's, you can guarantee that that kid is going to be Asperger's. Mm -hmm. Not the case at all. Mm -hmm. That's very good news. Thank you, NT Girlfriend. You continue to ask very great questions.